Midnight Stories for Rebel Girls. Hi, Rebels! This is Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls, the interview. I'm your host, Taya Diggs, and today we're talking to Danny Washington. She's a podcaster, TV host, and a science communicator. She also read us the story of climate change activist Shea Bastida. If you haven't heard that episode, make sure you give it a listen. Okay, Danny, can you introduce yourself to our listeners? Hey, I'm Danny Washington. I am a science communicator, TV host, and I'm also the host of a brand new podcast called The Genius Generation. Oh, cool. Can you tell us about The Genius Generation? The Genius Generation podcast is all about innovators, explorers, and inventors who are all under the age of 18. I'm talking to young people who are creating new solutions for some of the world's biggest problems. Just by creating new ideas and working with people in the community, this podcast is brought to audiences by Seeker and Trax, and you can listen to it wherever you get podcasts. Cool. We will have to check that out. So how did you start doing science communication? I studied marine biology at the University of Miami, and while I was studying, I realized that there were so many people that I met on a daily basis who didn't have the slightest clue about why the ocean was important to human life on this planet, which is kind of ironic. 70% of our planet is covered by water, yet people still felt disconnected. And so that's what inspired me to become a science communicator, someone who could be the bridge between the science community and everyone else, and be able to explain science concepts that tend to be pretty complex, but explain it in a way that's engaging and fun. And you even started your own nonprofit. Tell us about Big Blue and You. Big Blue and You is a nonprofit that I started when I was 21 years old in Miami, Florida. And the main purpose and mission of Big Blue and You is to inspire the next generation to learn about ocean conservation through art, science, and media. And one of the main reasons why I started it was because I wanted to make sure and see a lot more people of color, Black folks, Latinx community, and First Nations community getting involved in this conversation around the ocean. I think the history of environmentalism over the last few decades has deliberately excluded a lot of these important voices. You brought us the story of Shia Bastida, who you actually met at a big climate march. Can you tell us about what that day was like? Oh my gosh, the climate march in New York in 2019 was one of the best days of my life. I was able to participate in the citywide protests where 300,000 people were involved. The march ended with a rally and I remember going there and then meeting a lot of the organizers that were involved. And it was the most exhilarating moment that I've ever experienced in environmentalism and fighting back against climate change. And she and I actually met the following day in person because it was absolute craziness during the march. I'm just incredibly impressed by this young woman and her determination, her focus, and her clarity. I think she does such a brilliant job of describing what the climate crisis is and then creating opportunities for young people to get involved. Both you and Shia got involved in environmental issues at a young age. How can other kids get involved? The ways that kids can get involved right now in the environmental movement is to think about the issues that are specifically impacting your own community. Think of a 10 mile radius around your house. What are the things that are challenging? Do you need more trees planted in your neighborhood? Is there a waste management issue? Uh, Anything, you don't have to do it all. I know it can be really easy to get overwhelmed because the climate crisis is a huge issue with so many different facets, but If we all decide as individuals to take on at least one of those issues and then work together with those around us to create solutions, I believe that we really can tackle the climate crisis head on. That's really inspiring. So if you could go back and give yourself a piece of advice from when you were a kid, what would you say? The advice I would give myself as a kid would be to go for it. Just take action, use what you have, and start where you are. A lot of times we think that we need certain skill sets or we need certain tools or maybe more money to do what we dream of doing. Of course, nothing happens overnight, but I think it's important to remember that you have to look at things around you that you already have available. Sounds like great advice. Okay, last question. Danny, what makes you a rebel girl? What makes me a rebel girl is my tenacity. 
I will keep going until there are no other options. And I try my best to maintain energy so that I can inspire others to do the same. If it was easy to solve the climate crisis, we would have solved it already. We've got a lot of work to do and we need everyone involved and we need different skill sets and talents. So being a rebel girl really means taking that leap of faith and using your willpower, your determination and your tenacity to get to wherever you dream of going. Thank you, Danny. And thank you for listening. Remember, if you like the show, leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen and share it with all of your friends. Catch you next time. Stay Rebel. Rebel.